Okay, we're actually at the end of turn two now, uh, which went by rather quickly. I'll explain what happened. So this Viking unit, which started on the road here, uh, made use of the free move gained from the campaign section, where uh, a unit could move three squares for free. So it moved off the road across this rough hill and into the town and then tried to search and failed its first roll with six dice looking for one five and didn't get it so that ended the viking turn immediately with no reinforcements uh, so this unit here by the way i've forgotten to roll um, when a unit searches a building and then whether successful or not, you have to, the defender rolls a d6, and on the roll of a 6, the building's set on fire. It only actually takes hold when the unit leaves the square, which this unit did. It left this square that it had searched. Defender then promptly rolled a 6, setting that building on fire. Um, and this unit here remained uh, stationary um, because it couldn't move. So that was the end of their turn. So uh, onto the Saxon turn, this unit here uh, shook itself out into a battle line and a shield wall to defend those buildings. So you can see this unit coming. So there's going to be a clash there at some point. And the unit here that won the melee, uh, because it won the melee, it moved across into the uh, church square. Uh, had to take a morale test because it activated with morale uh, with dead bodies. Uh, it's actually improved its morale from uh, minus 4d6 to minus 2d6, so that supersedes the original result. Uh, and they uh, then promptly um, found themselves a new leader. Uh, and I basically stayed uh, at the church uh, in shield wall. So just Saxon reinforcements to roll, and then that's the end of the turn. So as a result of the reinforcement roll, um, the Saxons again amalgamated the dice for all three units, giving them 15 dice to roll. Um, and the randomised unit was this one, and they achieved two successes. So there's two bases ready from that unit, ready to go. Okay, start of the Saxon second turn and Erdwulf and these buildings has decided he needs to take the fight uh, to the Saxons, uh, to the Vikings, sorry, who've moved up into the village as part of their turn. I'll go through the rest of the Viking turn shortly, but there's a challenge which we haven't seen before. And we can see Erdwulf here uh, has challenged um the uh, the Viking leader, whose name is Eric, appropriately enough, Eric the Viking. So I'm going to show you how that works. And again, we'll go with purple dice for the Vikings and white for the Saxons. So this is an interesting little mechanic that's uh, well worth a bit of scrutiny. Let's just see if I can set the camera down. So this mechanism is a little bit like blackjack, if you think of it as blackjack, but using dice, and instead of busting at 21, the starting point is 13 uh, for each leader. However, if you're a general, you get plus one to your um, bus limit, so that goes to 14. Um, and to 15, because uh, Erdwolf is actually... Uh, a ferocious leader, whereas Eric is just um, a steady or sturdy leader. Um, the defender always goes first, so we get a four. Now, either combatant can decide to stick on the number they wish to. Um, if you go over your bus limit, then you, you're automatically dead. Um, if you stick 
and then your opponent carries on and gets to a point where they're three points higher than you, than you did, and the other result is a draw. So that's a four for the Vikings and a six. So there's a difference of two. So if both were to stick now, it would be an honourable draw. Obviously, the Vikings are going to carry on. Seven. Nine. So interesting now. So a dice roll of six would hit 13 for the Vikings. And it's a four, which puts them to 11, which really means they've got to stick because... Anything more than a one or two means that uh, the Viking is automatically dead. Um, so that's on 11. So there is a chance we could get a death here. And we've rolled a four. So we're on 13, which is two more. So it's not enough to kill um, the Viking. If uh, the Saxon was to stick now, or Adolf was to stick now. Um, but his death limit is 15. Uh, and similar to what the situation Eric the Viking was in, uh, is that he'd need to roll a 1 or a 2. Now, a 1 or a 2 would actually kill the Viking. But a f uh, 3, 4, 5 or 6 would mean um, Erdwolf himself is dead. So they are going to retreat back into their ranks and declare honour is satisfied. And I think... Erdwolf might just say, well, I did have the better of you, uh, but I've allowed you to live, so all is fair. And that's how a challenge works. Okay, well, goodness me, that was uh, an epic turn. So, uh, what's happened is that the unit that set fire to this building here, which is this one, um led by Anders um moved from here backwards mainly because they couldn't search this build these buildings because there was a Saxon unit in proximity they could have taken them on in a fight but the name of the game for the Vikings is Plunder, and there was Plunder in these here hills. And by God, they found some, found some loot. As did um, Harold, who found some chickens. So things started to look up a little bit there for the Vikings in that turn, because uh, they managed to find um, a couple of pieces of loot for the first time um, however I showed you the um, challenge that took place here uh, between Erdwolf and Eric the Viking uh, honour was served both men returned to their units and they both then fought and Erdwolf's unit came off the best Absolutely slaughtering the front line of the Vikings uh, without loss and um, gaining the gaining ground marker, which is a big bonus uh, in the fight, and routing Eric's men from the table. So that's two of the five Viking units now routed. And to make things even worse for the Vikings, a third unit of Saxons uh, has appeared on the table, uh, led by Hunfrith. Um, so I think the fight, the Saxons are feeling pretty good at the moment. That was the guitar falling to the floor. Uh, at the end of the Vikings' turn, their fifth unit did appear on the table, although because of the dire straits. The Vikings are in, they've left two bases at home, or shall we say, uh, guarding the ships. So two unarmored bases, so it's only a small unit of six bases. They did try to come on in this building square, which you can do, um, but because they lost the deviation roll, unfortunately they got lost and they're here now, next to the church. Um, but I suspect this is going to be 
a bit, bit of a Gibraltar that maybe the Vikings decide to bypass. Um, they certainly didn't fancy the fight here. And the Saxons are just staying in that village, uh, in that ch uh, church there, just to try and uh, defend this square, which can't be searched because they're in proximity and indeed the square that they're in. But we'll see what... Um, who's that? Frode can do with his fresh men who've just arrived on the field of battle. And in fact, both of these units might, not, might now wish to uh, move off and try and search some of these further from buildings, but with Saxons arriving down the road, let's see what happens. So that's the end of turn three, we're going into turn four. Okay, another fairly quick turn. Um, these chaps here, uh, led by Harold, uh, left this building with the aim to get over here to uh, search. Uh, and I plonked themselves on the hill. They couldn't quite get into uh, shield wall. Um, this unit led by um, Borg Hill himself moved, went into Swinehead and then tried to assault here and failed. Ending the turn, meaning that Frode's unit uh, was unable to move. So that ended the Viking turn. Saxons have only moved this unit. Um, who's their leader? That's Humphreth. Uh, and he's got up into shield wall and is now clearly threatening Frode's unit on the hill. And... Erdwolf has decided to stay and protect the buildings at the back of the village there, uh, but obviously may be needed across here. But that is the end of turn four, and we're going into turn five, after which the Vikings have to start paying to extend the turns, and they've only got two pieces of loot at the minute, so they certainly need to try and get one more this turn, I would suggest, and I would also suggest to try and Gamble to make that a gift from the god, which would be uh, the bishop, uh, Bishop Ada, in this uh, instance. But let's see uh, what happens. I'll come back and uh, we'll see what uh, occurs. Okay, okay, interestingly, start of this turn, um, Borghild has decided to throw caution to the wind and has gone in for the attack here. And for the first time, we've had a berserker. Go in, throw yourself against uh, the walls of um, that shield wall. The defender rolled five, so the berserker declared higher. Scored seven, which means they've scored automatically two hits in the coming fight. And Erdwolf is entering the fight in a swine head formation. So let's see how that goes. So how uh, Swinehead works is it's, it's basically a formation to try and punch through an opponent's shield wall now. Um, the Vikings have definitely got the numbers here, uh, an advantage in numbers. Um, and the Swinehead allows the player to uh, ask his opponent to re-roll his fight dice or he can choose to fight re-roll his fight dice. Uh, and it's his choice. So uh, we'll come back once I've built the two piles of dice. So this is the two piles of dice. Uh, 11 for the Vikings and f only 5 for the Saxons, uh, which is pretty bad news. The Vikings clearly looking to try and clear this church area to try and find some plunder. There'll no doubt be some decent plunder in that church um, and he can ask either either he can have either sets of dice re-rolled so let's have a look what uh, the Saxons get they 
you get two hits. Don't forget the Vikings are already on two because of the Berserker mechanic. This this should be very bad for the Saxons. Uh, we could re-roll that, but I don't think there's actually any need. Um, they've won by... Th so, effectively, we get two extra hits. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to two. Um, gives a result of hacking through. The winner inflicts two more hits. Um... And the shield wall breaks on a five or six. So the shield wall breaks, which I think, to be honest, is the least of that Saxon unit's worries. They've caused two hits on the uh, on the Vikings, uh, which have to be all placed on the first three bases in that sort of triangular formation. So I think what we'll do is put one. On the general, on Borkild, and he dies on a one, so he survives. The leader saves on anything but a one, he survives. And the berserker will die on a um, one or a two, and he survives. In fact, I've rolled more too many there, I've given them three hits. Uh, so no casualties at all for the Vikings now then. Two, four, six seven eight nine um so there's nine hits and there's only five bases so that's two 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 and one um we'll put two hits on the leader who dies on anything but or who survives on anything but a one so he's okay now we have uh, an unarmored base all right these save on four up and that survives. Well done. Uh, we have a second unarmoured base in the front rank. He dies. In fact, it's only front rank that dies. That's right. So he's dead. And we've still got three more hits to allocate. So we'll put two more onto the leader. He survives. And the unarmoured base, he dies. So actually, there's two... Deaths, only two deaths there. So that could have been a heck of a lot worse, but they have most definitely lost that fight. So just to show you how um, uh, the morale works in this instance. So the Vikings in that swine head, which now actually reverts back to a normal battle line, it only lasts for one turn, uh, but they are what's known as hacking through. I'll show you the meaning of that so we take a dice per dead body so we can see two uh, dead bases there for the saxons uh, the general isn't dead they aren't in shield wall anymore because uh, the swine had destroyed the shield wall and broke it apart and the opponent is now hacking through so that means three more dice so you can see that the impact or the momentum that the enemy unit has a big effect on the morale test as they begin to sort of push through in that in that fight now then um four fives and sixes are failures and we've got four fails there and i'm afraid that means three plus fails unit routes and is removed from the game uh that does mean it's the end of this unit's turn and they now follow up into that square. So that changes things up a bit now because um, this these buildings are now free uh, to be looted. Um, the unit that was involved in the fight can't do anything else now, but certainly Frode can. So let's see what he can achieve. Okay, an update uh, towards the end of the fifth turn for the Vikings. 
Uh, throat unit money to get in here, but um, only had two dice left, needing a five or six to carry out a successful search. I didn't think it was worth it because if it failed, that meant that um, Harold's unit on the hill wouldn't be able to get in here. And it was a good job they did because Harold's unit did get in here carrying the chickens. They now found some sheep, but that may be a wolf in sheep's clothing because now Harold is going to gamble to see if that is an actual fact. Bishop Ada. And four, five or six means it is. If we fail this roll, however, that uh, sheep is actually just some dirty old rags. And we have failed the roll. So an actual fact. It's some dirty old rats. Uh, yes, sorry about that uh, phone call interruption. So, uh, Harold thought he'd found uh, something very interesting, but it was actually just some dirty old uh, sheepskins, which uh, aren't worth anything. So, uh, that is the end of the Vikings' turn. Let's see what the Saxons can do. They've still only got, or now, sorry, they've only got the two units on the table. Um, there's two units off table. Uh, it's doubtful if we'll get any more than one of those on. It's just the fifth turn, so the Vikings could end the game here, but um, they've got two units in the church buildings there which haven't been searched, so it's well worth them extending the game for one turn uh, to a sixth turn. Um, for the opportunity to search there. We'll come back at the end of the Saxon turn. Well, that was an absolute disaster. Um, this unit here, under command of Anders, no, not Anders, uh, Hunfrith, uh, thought it would be a really good idea to move across the stream down here and sit here and not attack but by sitting there in proximity to both of these squares it meant that they couldn't be searched however this is an inferior unit because we've got one two three bases of levy so off the initial six dice it goes down to five dice and it was in shield wall so we had to drop the shield wall for first which we did and got down to four and then it needed a five or six to cross this stream uh, and it failed as you can see there so a very quick turn uh, for the Saxons uh, in which they've achieved absolutely nothing and are unable to bring on reinforcements probably more to the point okay so seeing as this is now um, turn six this will cost the Vikings 1d6 minus 2 victory points. However, to make it worthwhile, they need to carry out a successful search, ac search action. Now, Borghild, um, yes, Borghild is in here. So uh, he gives an extra dice. Uh, to the action dice so they get seven however they they are already carrying one item of loot so we take one of those away and we're down to six now then one five or six required to make this worthwhile and we get it i'm not favoriting favorite uh, showing favoritism <laughs> But uh, having made the decision to extend the game, it would have been absolutely terrible if uh, they'd failed that roll. So they do succeed in that search roll. Now, again, however many bases there are, and there's nine, that's how many dice are rolled. Looking for one six to try and find something in this church. They fought hard to gain this church. So one six is all that's required. Oh dear me. So, um, such as war, um, at the moment they've searched 
for nothing. Uh, the church is empty. But maybe there's plunder in this little A-frame house. Let's see. So the Vikings will stay where they are. Uh, let's just see if that church goes on fire if they leave. And it doesn't actually. We didn't roll for this one either. Although I don't think they're going to be leaving um, there. So this unit, they'll stay where they are. There's no point moving. This small unit, um, led by... Uh, oh, that's this is Frode. We'll search the A-frame house, or try to search the A-frame house. Now, they're not carrying any plunder. Uh, and they are a superior unit. So they get seven dice. Uh, five or six required. And they achieve it. Now those sixes, three sixes I've rolled there is what exactly what's needed now. So it's a successful search, so we can take the search token away. So if there is something to find, this next dice roll will tell us. And it's on a dice roll needing one six. Now we rolled nine dice and didn't achieve one six previously. And there's another six dice. That's 15 dice and no sixes, which is rather similar to what happened here, where we rolled something like 15 or 18 dice, I think it was, and didn't find a single thing. Uh, there's no chance that the building catches fire. So uh, the great plans of mice and men, the task is left to Harald, who's going to move into this building square and hope beyond hope that they find something worthwhile so they would normally start on six dice however they lose one because they are already carrying some chickens and to move into that square so this is actually going to be the hardest of all they need a five or six and they don't achieve a single five or a six. So that is singularly probably the worst set of dice rolls in the game. It means that the search for plunder and the extension of the game beyond uh, the fifth turn is completely wasted. And even worse, it means that the Saxons get a turn to do something themselves and I think what they might try and do is take this unit uh, and try and take on Harald. So Humphreys will try and move across the table and reclaim those chickens for themselves. So here they go, they failed their last action roll. They are an inferior unit, which means they only have five dice, but they only need to move into the open, and they do that. Here they go, or here they come. We lose the dice. I don't think they're going to get there, to be honest. We move into the open again. And they lose the dice, they're down to three dice now. And again, we're successful and move into this square. But, oh, this flag's fallen off. Apologies for that. There we go. An inferior unit. And now, to carry out the assault, there's absolutely no. So that's uh, one, two. So down to three dice. I need a five or six to perform the assault. Just contemplating whether it would be worth putting them 
into a shield wall. What's wrong with that? Yes, so I can see for dramatic effect. It's possibly the last turn, last dice roll of the game. So I need one, five, or six. There's two fours and a two. So that ends the Saxon turn. Crikey, that was an absolute um, tale of nothing that turn. Uh, because although on first move there's men down there to try and frighten Harald, he failed his activation roll to get the assault. Uh, so um, I could. Let's just do the reinforcement rolls uh, for the Saxons. In fact, we won't do the uh, reinforcement rolls for the Saxons. Uh, the Saxons could actually extend the game themselves, and that would give uh, the Vikings another turn. But um, I don't think there's much point. Um, we'll call the game there. So just in summary, two lots of plunder were found, one here. Um, although not in the church, the church was empty as was that A-frame house. We thought we'd found uh, the priest, but actually it was just some mouldy old sheepskins. But there is some chickens there to take back to the boat. Um, the Vikings lost two units to the Saxons one, and the Saxons only ended up the game with uh, playing the game with three units actually. Because two of them failed to arrive. But there we go. That is the end of this long ships game. And we'll come back next uh, to see who's won. Okay, so the results are in. And it's a 17 point victory for the Saxons. 56 points to 39. Mainly here, these 28 points were for dead uh, Vikings and the Saxons obviously destroyed uh, two whole units. Um, uh, I did get the uh, extension of the game bit wrong. So the attacker can always choose to play on or just say stop. So at the end of turn five, he could say stop, at which point the defender either agrees to that or extends the game. For one turn so the defender would then get his turn but the attacker would get one more turn as well uh, and the attacker can carry on just extending the game actually up to 12 turns however um, these searches here were failed so there's no plunder to be had there uh, they could have perhaps carried on here so there was six squares that were left six buildings that were left uh, unsearched. So we only searched half of the buildings on the table. Um, but you live and learn. Um, I haven't played these rules for a while, so uh, yeah, got that little bit wrong, but didn't take that deduction off uh, the attacker's victory points. Um, and as ever with Peter Pig rules, there is this element of luck where you're rolling uh, D6, four victory points, depends on criteria. So each dead leader, for instance, uh, is a D6. Um, and I think that was two each. And as it happened, both players rolled eight. Um, but the defenders get twice as many points for dead bases as the attackers do. The attackers, uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier in the game, are all about getting the plunder. Um and they just didn't get enough of it, to be honest. They only got two pieces out of a possible 12 that were available, albeit uh, this, these two buildings here and these two buildings, although successfully searched, uh, didn't find any uh, plunder at all. Or there wasn't any there to be found. The only plunder that was found was in these two uh, buildings. So that could have been very different if we'd found four more pieces of uh, plunder um, in fact, that probably would have made the difference um, if they'd found all four. That's potentially, on average, 28 points. So it would have been a win for the Vikings. So it's really the failure uh, to plunder efficiently and find what the Saxons were hiding. Uh, and if they got a gift from the, if they had converted that one piece of plunder 
the livestock for which they scored i think how many did they score scored nine points for um if they converted that into the gift from the god prize that was 5d6 with an expected value of 17 and a half so it's at least eight more points uh they could have reasonably expected on a 50 50 roll so um yeah that's gaming for you uh that's how it goes sometimes you've enjoyed uh, this little tour of um uh what uh long ships is and here we can see the victorious general erdwolf with his men uh standing on his tactical rock uh proclaiming we are bloody 